Yes, welcome back everyone. Thank you for still being here or welcome if you just joined here uh, in the Yuma Waka room. So we're on to our fourth speaker and uh, joining us today is James uh, Nyega. So James is a geomatics, um, geomatics and geospatial specialist in Kenya. He studied at the Dan Kimathi University. He is driven by the zeal to contribute effectively to open source GIS development and meeting consumers' need. So yeah, James, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. And I uh, will take this opportunity to take you through or to do a presentation on the impact of application of free and open source software for GIS on non-revenue water. Let me share my screen. So I will do a presentation from Nanyuki Water and Sewerage Company. And the title of the presentation is the impact in application of free and open source software for GIS in non-revenue water reduction. My name is James Kirumba Jenga. I can start with the introduction. Uh, James is a GIS officer and as well as GIS software developer in Nanyuki Water and Sewerage Company that is in Kenya, Laikipia County. I can go direct to our country profile so that people can understand uh, where is Laikipia or where is Nanyuki Water and Sewerage Company. I can say uh, Kenya is a country in East Africa and uh, with a population of 47.6 million people, that is from the 2019 census data. Our largest city, which is also the capital city, is Nairobi. And most of people who live in Kenya speak Swahili and English. As of 2020, Kenya is the third largest economy in sub-Saharan Africa. As of 2013 general elections, there are all 47 counties, like Kipia County is one of them. Uh, our company profile, uh, Nanyuki Water or Nanyuki Water and Sewerage Company is located in a town called Nanyuki and that town is in Laikipia County. The company service area is uh, about 286 square kilometer. We offer water services to about 109,000 people as well as sanitation services to about 35,000 people. Uh, the length of the water network that has been mapped is around 450 kilometer, as well as the length of the sewer network is 34 kilometer. Our water production is at 14,000 cubic meter per day. Uh, this is just a map showing how our infrastructure or our GIS data is. With the help of uh, QGIS, we were able to map all our infrastructure. That is from the water pipes, the customer connection, the sewer lines, the appurtenances, the tanks, as well as subdivide our area in small manageable blocks. Also on that slide, it's existing water supply water network. This is a GIS data on our infrastructure overlaid on our open street map showing our pipelines where we have our intake as well as our treatment works. So maybe we can ask ourselves, who uses GIS in Nanyuki water? We have the engineers. Uh, most, all the engineers in Nanyuki water use GIS. They overlay drawings for various projects. They also do design proposals. That is for sewer lines, 
as well as uh, determine the routes for various projects. We have uh, our meter readers. Our meter readers uses GIS in locating customer meters that may have been missed out. We have the disconnection team. Uh, we have proper route planning by knowing during disconnection period. They need to know where all the connections are from the GIS. And with that, they are able to access or they're able to visit the customers within the shortest time possible. Then we have the non-revenue team. This is, uh, they use GIS when they are establishing an area called district metering area, as well as mapping of leaks and bust and customer complaints. We also have a team in new connection. They use GIS in identifying pipe details, uh, those pipes that are installed near customer premises. We also have a sewer and blocking team. They use the GIS to visualize the sewer network and manhole depth mapping of sewer blockage areas. Maybe I can just hi highlight or explain what is NLW using uh, your water balance. Non-revenue water, known as NLW, is water that has been produced and it is lost before it reaches the customer. Uh, Non-revenue water impacts the financial security of the utility and the ability to plan effectively for future demand. As such, eliminating NLW is a critical aspect of utility management. Uh, from the EWA water balance, we have the system input, that is the water that is uh, directed to the pipeline. So we have the authorized consumption and unauthorized consumption. And for non-revenue water, we have unmetered consumption, we have unbilled and metered consumptions, we have an authorized consumption, we have customer meter inaccuracies, leakage on transmission and distribution mains, leakage and overflow at storage tanks, leakage on service connection up to point of customer meter. Non-revenue water management nightmares. What are some of critical issues that all contributes to non-revenue water? We have poor workmanship. In Nanyuki Water and Sewerage Company, uh, when we are doing our meter installation, they usually pick the coordinates and they feed into the system. So if we have an issue in that connection, we refer back to our GIS data and we are able to know who did that connection and we are able to say how the connection was done. Another nightmare is customer employee bribery. We have vandalism, we have leaks and busts, illegal connections, unattended customer complaints, incompetency, as well as slow technology uptake. So in the new water, GIS plays a key role in one, metering. That is as I explained before, once we connect a customer with the meter, we always pick the coordinates for it to be used by now billing. The billing people here are the meter readers. When they visit the customer, in Kenya we have some, uh, we do manual reading of our meters. So when these meter readers visit a customer, at times they don't know where the meter is. So with the help of GIS, they are able to get the location of the meter and therefore we bill all our customers accurate. We have an revenue reduction as well as project design and planning. Non-revenue water reduction using QGIS. The methodology adopted involved data collection whereby GPS points for water facilities, pressure data, elevation data, and cadastral data were obtained. This data was harmonized through creation of a database in post-GIS. 
Pressure data and elevation data were interpreted using QGIS and numerous analysis performed, including identification of pipe network prone to burst and leakages. A buffer of five meter from the road reserves that shares boundary with consumers' parcels of lands was generated. This aided in determining the consumer's connection served with long service line exceeding five meter that were frequently interfered with by human activities. Also, a selection by a location analysis in QGIS was conducted to identify meter classes that required immediate replacement. When we install these meters, we always record the non-spatial data, that is the class of the meter, the manufacturer, the serial number. So using a selection by location, we were able to select all the classes of the meters that did not meet our standard, and therefore they were supposed to be replaced or they were replaced. The cadastral data on the road shape file and topographic maps were shared through GeoServer WFS service from the Ministry of Lands and Roads. Uh, Bust and leaks management using QGIS and PostGIS. This is for non-revenue water management. We have line patrollers who always use the GPS as well as the smartphones. These line patrollers, their work is to walk along the main lines. As they see a burst or a leak, they take the coordinates of the map, then they upload to our servers. And from there, as a GIS officer or as a GIS analyst, I overlay those data or I overlay those leaks and bursts with the pipe network, digital elevation model, as well as a Google satellite image, so that we can see where these bursts are concentrated. Then from there, we do an analysis, burst and leak analysis. We do reclassification and hotspot analysis, and we generate reports and maps for our management to make decisions. Some of the decisions that's made by the management is pipe replacement, relocation of pipes, anchoring or installation of pressure reducing valves. Infrastructure management using QGIS. Leaks and bursts are added to the GIS as a layer and it is stored in the database. This helps us to understand network historical performance through a GIS-based visual representation of leaks substantially its water loss mitigation effort. Uh, on this map here, I have marked a pipe for replacement. This is an old pipe that was installed long time ago. And because from the GIS data, we have the age when these pipes were laid. Just by selecting from the attributes, we are able, using QGIS, we are able to get the pipes that need to be replaced. Also, mapping of our customers help us to know, maybe we had a smaller size, a smaller diameter pipe, and now the land has been subdivided, and we have more customers connecting to that line. From the GIS, we are able to advise the technical team that now this pipe needs to be upgraded to a larger diameter pipe that will serve those customers. I'll give a, a success story of a pilot project. The project name is Blue Gum District Metering Area. This is an area that had issues with water loss water theft, unknown pipes, pipe passing on customers' land. And using GIS or using 
QGIS, we were able to demarcate that area. And the area was selected and it had a non-revenue water of 50%. Isolation of water networks was done in QGIS and it led to a creation of 12 sub DMAs with initial 1,200 connection. Then from there, procurement of 550 number consumer meters and three GPSs or three GPS gadgets, two motorbike for line patrollers, training and restructure of the non-revenue water section. After demarcating the area and mapping all the customers and realigning all the network, there is a continuous monitoring and reporting, as well as undertaking rapid result initiatives and performance improvement plans. Also, we have the scaling up the approach to other areas. This is a pilot project in Blue Gum district metering area. And after the result, successful results of this, we were able to do another project that is success to number two, pilot projects with development partners. An area called uh, Ishuga in Kenya project was conceptualized by the GIS and non-revenue water units and got funded by Water Sector Trust Fund. The idea was to reduce water losses in the area through network upgrade and extensions. On the next slide are some of the changes that have been observed with regards to key indicators, such as reduction in non-revenue water and increased billing. On the map here, you can see we have some customers mapped on that area, as well as the boundary of the project area and the pipes within that project area. So some of the successes for this pilot project is that the average non-revenue water before was 50% and currently it is at 10.7%. That is a drop of 39.3% just by mapping the area, mapping all the customers, getting to know where all the pipes are, as well as analyzing the leaks and bursts within that area, we were able to reduce our non-revenue water from 50% to 10%. Also the average monthly billing was 4,760, US dollars before. Currently, the average is around 5,816 US dollar per month and it's still growing. From the graph, you can see the red line is the non revenue water, the way it has been behaving. In the month of May, that's when we were doing the project. And you can see from October, November to December and January 2021 the graph is going down. That means our NLW is still dropping. Then I'll do a presentation on Nawasco Online GIS system. This is a system that we use in day-to-day -day activity. The way we use this system is it helps us to know the location of the customers, the location of the pipeline from, your, from our mobile phones as well as the tablets and the computers. The system used by Nanyuku Water and Swarage Company was developed and maintained by Mr. Jin, who did a presentation on free and open source software for GIS development for water utilities management in East Africa by using vector tiles. This online GIS system is used by meter readers. Because it's very light, it's very fast. They use it to, and also the disconnection team use the system to locate the exact location of customer meters and therefore improve bidding efficiency. 
Also, this system is used by the technical team in identifying valves that need to be closed during repair works and maintenance. Field surveyors to measure the length of the pipe needed for new connection. Customer care desk to search for customer location and also advise the maintenance team on the sizes of the pipes during repair works. This is a, a, a screenshot of the system. A user has clicked on one of the customer location and all the information about that customer are populated. So when they are on the ground, when they are, work, they are working, they are able to know the location as well as the information of the customer. Some of the information that we have in our GIS database for the customers is the account number. This is a unique identifier that identifies a customer. We have the customer name, the plot number, category, the zone ID, whether that customer is seward or not, the connection date, as well as the meter serial number. Uh, GIS is waking up the world to the power of geography. This science of integration has the framework for creating a better future. Thank you. Thank you, James, for that uh, very wonderful presentation. I've learned a lot from you. I just call it water loss. Now I know that it's called non non revenue water wow <laughs> yeah so uh any yeah. questions from the audience let me see yeah there's no uh question yet uh from the audience so yeah while um yeah while we're waiting maybe i can ask some questions to you uh if you can uh, just remind me when did you start this project and how long it will uh go on and how, how it will be maintained after the funding of the project? Uh, thank you. Uh, for the project, okay, I will start with the mapping of our customers or mapping of our infrastructure. We started in the year 2014. For the project was done in the year 2020. And for mapping of our customers and the infrastructure, that is something that will be continuous. Each and every time when we do a new connection, we have to map, we have to get the location of those connections as well as the location of any line that is done. For the project, uh, we are still doing monitoring for that project. And from the profit or from the results, we are able to do other projects or to demarcate areas into smaller manageable areas. Yeah. Thank you, James. Yeah, just also to acknowledge uh, Jean Igarashi, uh, the software developer of the uh, Nanyuki Web GIS portal is uh, here in the chat with us. Jean uh, will be also able to answer questions from the audience and yeah i guess uh maybe the last one is how can people connect with you or contact you james uh okay i will share i think from the chat i will share my email address as well as uh social media accounts and also my github account thank you yeah Yes, thank you, James. Any other uh, closing message from you? I will say thank you very much for hosting this workshop. It's my first time presenting on uh, free and open source uh, software for GIS. And I look forward to do more presentation. And thank you very much. Yes, thank you, James. And congrats to your first presentation. It was wonderful. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. We'll be uh, we'll be back in five minutes for our uh, fifth presentation. See you later.